Two dinosaur flicks fight tooth and tail. You see what I did. It's 1988's Land Before Time versus Disney's first computer generated film, Dinosaur. Let's feud. It's a no brainer here. Land Before Time has some easily recognizable characters. From the just can't quite fly Petrie to the stubborn as all hell Sarah. She's the worst. Then there's the big guy Spike, who's more interested in filling his belly than worrying about danger around him. My personal favorite swimming dinosaur, Ducky and the leader of the group, Littlefoot. We meet many other interesting characters on the journey and we get multiple run-ins with the villain of the picture, Sharp Tooth, the Tyrannosaurus Rex. As a kid, I could easily point out some of my favorites from the Brontosaurus to the Triceratops. Disney's Dinosaur goes a much less conventional route by casting creatures based more on where they realistically were located than just throwing in a bunch of standard ones. For example, instead of having the standard T-Rex as a bad guy, we get two Carnotaurus. I'm not sure I'm saying that right, I also don't really care that much. Instead of the Brontosaurus as the, as the lead hero, we get an Iguanodon. Such a crappy dinosaur. His name is Aladar. He too meets up with some unconventional friends and faces pushback when trying to save his group. Mainly from Kron, the large hot-headed Iguanodon. The biggest difference between the two pictures are the family of lemurs that Aladar is trying to keep safe. Since he was adopted by them when he was just a wee little one, the rest of the plot is almost identical. And we're gonna get into that right now with story. I could make a very strong case that Dinosaur ripped off Land Before Time's superior script. Let's look at the similarities, shall we? Both movies start out with our protagonist being hatched in a dangerous situation. Both films have a cataclysmic event that separates the herds. The overall goal is exactly the same. They need to get to a place where there's plenty of food and water to maintain life. There's also a large antagonist who stalks our characters for the majority of the film and they're forced to confront and kill at the end. The Land Before Time tells this story in a much better way. It's very sad for one, borderline depressing, killing the mom early on and constantly reminding Littlefoot that he's on his own. Secondly, it moves very fast. Granted, it's like 10 minutes long, but it's easily rewatchable. Dinosaur starts out very exciting and definitely thinks outside the box in terms of camera angles taking us inside the egg of an iguanodon and under the water as a dinosaur drinks. Things slow way down though when the land dries up and we're left with a lot of walking and a lot of talking. For a film that came out almost three decades ago, The Land Before Time is phenomenal. It looks incredible. The animation is smooth and silky. Produced by both Spielberg and Lucas and directed by Don Bluth assures a top tier experience. Dinosaur had a lot to prove for Disney. It was their first computer generated film and it was a doozy of a budget. 127.5 million. It turned out to be a great marriage of computer effects and real world location shots. The dinosaurs look lifelike at times. It's a technical marvel, especially in the year 2000. The Land Before Time, or LBT for short, brings earth shakes, chase scenes, dinosaur fights, and plenty of heart. Dinosaur has that really intense and beautifully shot meteor shower sequence, and unfortunately the rest of the film cannot live up to that early standard. It does have a lemur mating scene though, so something for the kids. Does LBT have one of my favorite motion picture songs of all time? Yep, yep, yep. Diana Ross's masterpiece, If We Hold On Together, is beautiful and tragic at the same time. James Horner put together the composition that dips in and out throughout the movie. Fun Adam fact, I sing that song to my kids almost every night before bed regardless of whether or not they want me to. James Newton Howard composed 27 tracks for Dinosaur. They are all very tribal and intense, but not very memorable, which I think is the real takeaway for Dinosaur in general. It's a well-crafted machine that you'll forget about the next day. I love The Land Before Time. It's one of my favorite animated films. I grew up with it as a child. I have fond experiences of it, but that's not to say it's nostalgia that keeps me coming back. It has a great message, adult themes, lovable characters, sans Sarah. And you know what? I, I can just think back when I was a kid and, and I had, I even had the sock puppets. They had sock puppets at Pizza Hut. You'd put on your hands and you could, you could, you know, reenact something from it, I guess. Me and my buddies did a talent show with it. We 
we lip synced with the puppets to Paula Abdul's Opposites Attract. There was a lot there. I don't expect you to understand any of it. We're gonna, we're gonna move past it. But it did happen. Dinosaur definitely paved the way to what could be achieved in terms of computer generated storytelling. It's just a shame that the story wasn't an original one. You've heard my take, and as well, I encourage you to do the same. Post a comment, like, and subscribe to the channel, and check me out on Patreon. More than just reviews, this is Movie Feuds, and remember, three horns don't play with long necks. That was Sarah's father's quote. That whole family is the worst. They should be extinct. Oh, well, they. Don't lose your way for each passing day. You've come so far. Don't throw it away. Live believing. Dreams are for weaving. Wonders are waiting to start. Live your story. Faith and your glory. Hold on to truth in your heart. If we hold on together. I know our dreams will never die. Dreams see us through to forever. Where clouds roll by for you and I. Good night, dinosaurs. Good night, Littlefoot. Good night, Petrie. Good night, Spike. Good night, Ducky. Not you, Sarah. You're terrible. <laughs>